can you enable the, the speech, the actual oh, right, the chat, chat, the chat. That's that one there, chat. Yeah, chat there. There's the chat. Oh, you can put it as well. So yeah. if anyone asks a question, you can you chit chat them. That doesn't go any loud, it doesn't go any bigger than that. I don't really mind that. Me and a pigeon can have a chat. See that wind's coming now, see? Pierce Corbyn win the mayor oh election. Will you vote for him? Or will, or will yeah. it be a wasted vote? It's not a wasted vote, is it? Why is it a wasted vote? Because, because all the, the anti-ULIS people are saying votes for Susan Paul. Anti-ULIS people are Susan Susan Paul. You don't know who Susan Paul is? Why are you not going to She's the Tory person running for mayor. And well, you don't have these ULIS well processes. Well, then they don't know what they're talking about. I thought you just clued up on this stuff. Get down from there. <laughs> I don't, I don't, Get down from there. <laughs> I don't say, follow that that carefully, you know what I mean? The, the fact that the... the You've the, never cared the, about ULIS for some reason. Why haven't you cared about ULIS? I do care about no, ULIS, you, but not... not, not he's for, your car. You my have to pay £12.50. My car is compliant. Yeah, is that, that's why you don't care. <laughs> that's why that, that's why that, it's certainly a, a part of it, but it's not. I don't care. It's just there's a much wider issue, and that that I am concerned about uh, the surveillance state. One thing, uh, the imposition. If, if you go around town, I've, I mean, I've got a parking, I've got a speeding ticket the other day <laughs> for um, for driving 28 miles an hour well, in a 20 miles in a, an hour, in a 20 mile an hour zone, zone. zone on Finchley Road, which is a three lane road. Uh, three lane each way road coming off the um, off the motorway at Brent Cross. So you come off the motorway at Brent Cross. I was 1 40 in the morning. I came round there, drove down there, assuming it was a 40 mile an hour area, and then um, flash, flash. Uh, you know, and I've got a police letter threatening to take me to court for a, a 28 mile an hour driving in a 20 mile an hour zone and then you drive around London and it's all 20 miles an hour and you've got cameras in every corner the ULES cameras the main worry there they were never designed to be cameras aimed at high emission cars they're cameras aimed at monitoring the entire movement of traffic in the city uh, and not only traffic but also the people because wherever they can observe the people they can make a facial recognition those cameras are facial recognition uh, capable so they can monitor they can be able for example because what happens at the moment is people drive 20 miles an hour when there's a camera and then when they get past the camera they drive 22 25 28 even 30 and then when the camera if you've got a, a modern car it will have a little thing that tells you a speed camera and then you slow down but with these new cameras because they're everywhere and that's the reason why they're everywhere because they're everywhere they will be able to introduce a system whereby they say you driven from that spot to this spot and you couldn't have done that unless you were driving more than 20 miles an hour and then they can find you for that and they can monitor your, your total boot so that and if you drive anywhere you drive around London now that's what's going on you've got you've got surveillance systems being rolled out on a massive scale give up the car then now, I'm, would say I'm opposed it's utterly dystopian it is utterly dystopian <laughs> and, and I'm totally opposed to that I'm opposed to you Les but I did join in the organising campaign you know, because it's just I've got so many I've got things to do and that wasn't my priority it's good that it was some people's priority but it wasn't mine um, but having said that the, the the, the dystopian nature of what's happening is ubiquitous and it's an important campaign well, that people can fight on. That's a point you say because because I just need to tell you, you know Susan Hall said Susan Hall I don't said, know who Susan Hall well, is. Well she said she said opposition Well she she, she said she'll get rid of you Les, but she won't get rid of the cameras. Ah, well. So if she gets so that so that point you say is I'm gonna get rid of it and then you can switch it back on at any point. So after you Or well, use it for one, another purpose. Yeah, or use it for another purpose. Which is essential. And they don't spend well, fifty thousand pounds per camera. How much? You know, I think it's fifty thousand pounds per main, camera. Main is ongoing, isn't it? Oh. I don't think they spend a vast amount of money <laughs> per camera 
in order to take them down or in order i mean as i said previously well, in China. they've Has got a database a they have a database of which cars are compliant and non-compliant yeah. right so they can just write directly to anyone in london for example or in the surrounding areas and say to them we will we would charge you more money for driving your car because it's got a higher emissions they could do that without any cameras so it's got nothing to do with you less military the camera uh, system uh, sorry the the, the 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 emission story it's got nothing to do with, 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 with the reason for using the police never, the police all of all uh, civil service uh, machines are exempt aren't they like if you've got you know like when the, they said that there's an oh, exemption for fun fairs and all that and there's exemptions for they, they've got diplomatic immunity as well to some extent isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Well, is that true yeah i i don't know i don't know but the, it, it, the issue i was asked about is why i didn't campaign on so much on that well you know you pick your fights don't you some people want to fight on one issue yeah, other people fight another issue oil, yeah. you can't fight on every on every fight, issue yeah, sorry don't don't do stop oil and, and start destroying like works of art and stuff like that so well i've i've never been a supporter of those people um, idiotic huh? i think they're idiotic and I, and i think the argument which is the central argument piers has been making i think he's correct on that uh, you know the the idea that fossil fuels or what they call fossil fuels are causing and co2 in particular is causing a change in the climate and can you prove that please i said the idea that just can you prove it i can't prove it no one can prove that i can't prove Not it even scientifically well and the biggest polluters on the planet do. are from china what people and the do. you and the and the electric hang most on, electric hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on a minute hang on a minute can you prove it no. the question you just asked was I raised the question about CO2. But well, the biggest polluter on the planet is, is China. And CO2 communists, is not, you is, can't stop them. CO2 can't is, stop not, them making CO2 is not pollution. Okay? You can't stop them. CO2 is not pollution. CO2 is not pollution. Well, enough of it is, is toxic, though, if it's not balanced with trees, yeah? Well, how much is toxic? I don't, I don't know. You get in a submarine, 7,000 7, parts per... <laughs> or I think that whatever the unit is per inch or whatever it is, 7,000 parts. We have about 400 parts in the air at the moment, right? In the, prove that? You can prove that, yes. You, no, you, get a, you said you can, you can't prove that. You can prove that. But you can't. Why can't you prove it? Because you haven't got the machine on you right now to prove it. Wait, I know that doesn't mean that doesn't mean it's not, that doesn't mean right it's not provable. Right hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That doesn't mean it's not provable. Just as you, you just, just as well, you, well, you've just backed it up by your own argument. You just said over there yeah. the amount is higher. Yeah, it's obvious, though, isn't it? You well, you haven't proved it either. You've said it. You can't smell it because CO two is is you can't smell it. It's not just CO two though, is it? But but you said I, I mean I was talking about CO two emissions, right? And I, and, and then emission CO two emissions, which are defined. I know it's more. I know it's more than that. We were talking about this question about the change in the climate. You must be out of your mind. Hold on, what? I do think you is a scam. He didn't say that. What are you saying? Picking your fights, though. That is the ultimate. So he said you is a scam. He said he couldn't campaign for anything. He said he can't do all the campaigns. That's what he was saying. There are plenty of campaigns to fight on. You is a big campaign. It's a big campaign. That's true. He's pissing a lot of people. That people are <laughs> people are chopping evil, down though. cameras. I think it's, it's a big evil. deal. Yeah. So evil. if you're not on board, board. Yeah. <laughs> when did I say? <laughs> I so you're not working class then? That's what I did. I say I was on board. Are you working class, man? When did I say I was on board? What are you? Are you middle class then? You don't need to worry about travelling around to do a trade or something. No, you're not listening to anything. I'm just asking you straightforward facts. You're trying to. It's not affecting you then. For whatever reason. To you looked at me. You're trying to cause a row. You're trying to cause a row. You're picking fights that are suited to, to your class. For whatever, reason, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, for whatever reason you've, you've looked at me, no, you've listened to me, no, and you've taken a dislike. So you're middle class. And you've decided that no matter what I say, you're going to contradict the disagreement. So you must pay £12.50 a day. So you don't listen to a word I'm saying. And you accuse me. You accuse me. I'm telling you you're doing it on your class. You're trying to pick a fight with me about issues which no I agree with you about. With you, just saying so you I don't know why you're doing that. What you facts? Say, you're yeah, telling, you're, you're, coming, you're, out with, you're coming out with, you're telling me there's 400 parts for this and that. Where's, your, where's your counter to show me that? 
Well, I'm just telling you, that's how yeah. the data... Now, from yeah. where are you getting that Where's research? Where's your accountant to show me that you've got a brain? So when you start spitting rubbish like that, I you're going to start... I think he's on the spectrum of people some autism kind of levels. People believe you don't believe you, but you need to show me evidence for that. Evidence for what? You told me there's 400 parts. Yeah, don't worry about it. If you want evidence... If you want someone... You told me it was... If you want someone to speak to you... I'm not even trolling you, I'm just being honest. If you want someone to speak to you, only with evidence... You want to keep it general. You need to keep, keep, you need to keep it generalised. You don't want to start specifying because then I'm going to look at statistics. Because no one has got loads of machines and instruments to prove. And even if they did, even if they did, but I don't bring it because I don't <laughs> know you're coming to this meeting. How do you know you're going to be at the meeting? You're the one standing on the pedestal. Standing on a platform or on a platform, whatever. That's right. So, so I should have a CO2 measurement. You do need to have it if you're going to talk rubbish. Can we, can we, can we move on? Listen, there's questions. plenty of really interesting yeah, meetings over it. there. Can there are really the interesting stuff. meetings over there, all about religion. Yeah, it's a waste of time. I'm sure you'll enjoy it, and they won't be able to prove their stuff either. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll have a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, some people, it's perfectly true. No, I mean, you walk into a room, in a pub, or in a pub, and there's some people, you, you look at them and, you're, and, and you won't be drawn to talk to them, communicate with them. Or you might even, for whatever reason, primevally, you might think, I don't like that person. Right? And that person, he came over here, and I'm sure that's what in the back of his you've mind. You've seen that guy I think he's on That's system. why. You've seen that guy before. Whatever it is, he definitely had that in his mind now. I'm not having any of it. Whatever I say, I'm not having, even when I agree with him. No, 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 no. But when you agree with me, you disagree with me. So that's what it was. So. I can't help that. That's the world we live in, you know. People, and yes, you can have people who got whatever reason, mentally, physically, socially, whatever it be. And sometimes you stand in the speaker's corner and people will have a go at you about nothing. Yeah. There is that as well, because there is that terrible communist instinct that people have, which is to think these things is above us. And they, the word even says it. He, he, he thinks it's above us. You know, time, it's first time and, 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 that's right, and therefore, and some people get scared. You know, they go, "Oh, I couldn't stand on a platform." People might think I'm above them, right? And uh, and the art of speaker's corner, of course, is trying to keep that at bay. Can't always do it, but trying to keep that at bay, and then trying to keep a discussion going and moving forward in some direction. So that's what I try to do at speaker's corner. Whether I do it well or not, that's up to the, the oh, specific bad. day. A specific day, a specific circumstance, a specific circumstance, the specific meeting, the specific argument, and uh, where we go with it. And you can lose them, you can, you can all turn against you. What? You've been here five minutes and you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah, I want to know what your principal argument I'm interested to hear what you've got to say. Oh, the principal argument. The principal argument. This is a TED talk. So, uh, what are you saying about CO2? I missed that. Well, what was the time? Side the CO2 issue was, I said I agree with peers on CO2, but CO2 is not a threat to human beings, nor do I think it causes climate change. So that was the argument that the guy started inverting and throwing it back. How do you know? But you know, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's like we, it's basically, I don't think climate change is caused. I don't think climate change is caused by man. I think the climate changes naturally, but of course. You're not a scientist, are you, sir? Well, I mean, what is it? If someone's a scientist, for example, you could be a scientist in nuclear physics. You might know nothing about morality. You could be a scientist in chemistry and know nothing about biology. You could be a scientist in biology and know nothing about political economy. You could be so. Why? People, when people say to you, the scientists say, it's a meaningless term, right? Sorry? Yeah, but if you look then, if you then look, if you then look at what the definition of a climate scientist is, you'll find it's a very narrow field. And most of the people who speak about so-called climate science are not climate scientists. I, however, I do have a doctorate, so you can call me a scientist or an educated individual in the normal concept of what education is. 
and my doctorate is in political economy. And I think actually, funnily enough, political economy is far more important to understand the theory of man-made climate change than is, for example, climatology. Right? Because when they talk about this, if you accepted the theory, if you accept the theory for a moment that Can't climate, you say, is it, it just it one, one, just one second. Yeah, if you accept the theory for a moment that the climate is governed by a CO2 button, and CO2 buttons are governed by industrial and economic activity, then political economy, knowledge about what leads to this industrial and political, uh, industrial and economic activity is at the centre of the entire discussion that they're engaged in. It's, it underlies the whole discussion about CO2 emission levels. But I, I also do not believe, however, that CO2 causes climate change. CO, I believe CO2, and I think not the, the evidence shows that CO2 levels rise as the temperature rises. The causative element is the increase in temperature. The, the consequence of rising temperature, well, it is correct. In fact, it's, it's, it's acknowledged, acknowledged so-called climate science by the, one minute, by the official climate science, as they call it, in other words, IOPC and all this type of thing. It is acknowledged that temperature rises cause an increase in CO2. What they argue, what they argue, well just to clarify, before you run away and make yourself look foolish, look it up on the internet now and you'll see that is exactly what they argue. He probably retweeted Greta Thunberg. What, just to finish that piece because in case anybody uh, uh, hasn't understood what I was about to say and I didn't finish what I was saying, I was about to give him a bit of leeway but he didn't want it because it was already forbidden science. They say that the temperature, rises in temperature, exacerbate CO2 levels. But what they also say is, is that there is a, a feedback loop whereby man's interaction increases the exacerbated CO2 and that causes the deadly threat to man that they claim exists. That's what they argued. Unfortunately, he wasn't willing even to hear his own argument being put. Just uh, the difference between uh, pseudoscience and science in terms of a theory is that a theory is a fund one of the fundamental parts of science is, um, oh God, who was it who came up with? Uh, but it's, a, a theory has to be falsifiable. It was probably, yes. Um, so, for example, like uh, if you've got a theory, all swans are white. As soon as you see one black swan, that theory falls, and that's it. That's the end of the theory. Yes. If you well, can't well, falsify it. Well, with the proviso that um, that black swan hasn't been painted. Okay, yeah, if it's a genuine black swan. So it could have been a white swan that was painted, or it might not be a swan. Right, okay. Yeah. That might be yeah, another problem. Let me finish my point though. You get, the, you get the point about it's got to be falsifiable. When it's not falsifiable, then it becomes a, a, a theory that explains everything, which is like a religion. And so you can't <laughs> listen to anything else because it then becomes heresy. And that's what's happened with these guys, why they've stopped off. Because they because you're spouting heresy. It is. I think you're there is also, the whole world view. That's why there, they there is an the intellectual cult. arrogance. Yes. Yeah, there is an intellectual arrogance which has been manifest during the whole COVID story and was mani and is manifest in the climate story. It's also manifest, by the way, which underlies the whole story in economics. In economics, there is a dogmatic adherence to the ideas that the free market is the only mechanism and the most suitable mechanism for humanity, which has emerged out of some natural evolutionary process and, and matches the nature of man. And it's associated with that... It's never allowed to be just a free market. It's always socialism for the rich. Socialism for the rich. 
and tough love for the rest of us. Well, that, 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 that's one of the arguments, actually, of the, of the uh, capitalist economists. It, it is exactly, well, it had never quite been realized, uh, well, the free market. Well, but you don't have to be puritanically <laughs> you don't have to capitalist or free market no, no. to appreciate that a balance <laughs> economies that lean towards a free market approach do better. Um, well, maybe we can have this conversation another time. But well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. There's always a nuance. I don't mind. Things are presented in the public sphere as being one or the other. So there is a grey area that we're lacking. Okay, I, 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 I'd like to come back to that in a couple of minutes, just to try and sew up some of this argument about science. So they do have, as we say, I'll, I'll come on to that in a couple of minutes. That's a London School of uh, Economics, and they say economic science. So we'll come on to that in a little while. So some fields of scientific thought do not have a resolution, which is as simple as saying it's refutable. It, it, it's not, some fields do not have a resolution. It's not a theory. So that. It's not a theory. You do, however, have. But it's not a theory. <laughs> one minute, one minute. In most spheres, I would agree, refutability is important. Or better said, asking someone, which is what Popper said, he said, if you've got a theoretical proposition, which you're saying is scientific, do you yourself know how that could be refuted? Because yeah. then you've got some mechanism to seek out Absolutely. that question about the black uh, swan, as you yes. said. That's your and job. What you paid to do is to, is to disprove your own theory. Well, yes. That's, that's your job. It's, well, it's, it's, it's part of your job. Or, yeah. or better, better said, an invitation to others yeah. to disprove it. Because yeah. you may not be the greatest uh, brain on it's the world, just, just and there may theory. be many other brains who might be capable of refuting yeah. what you put forward. So Karl Marx put forward the idea that he is developing a science of society. That's what he said. And what he meant by that was a method for understanding the dynamics of human society and of nature as a whole, a general method for developing an understanding of the dynamics of human society, of the internal contradiction within it, and where they lead. However, Popper explicitly took up this question with the intention of refuting Marx. The idea was that Marxism cannot be realized, has not been realized, and that that is the refutation of Marx's ideas. So this is the refutation of his science, that it has not been realized, it cannot be realized, and he didn't work out any way that it could be refuted. It's a belief that there will be such a society. Now there's an element of truth in that. Having said that, in the Communist Manifesto, one of the founding documents of Marx's ideas, he did say that the dynamics of capitalism, because what he was trying to work was a historical method of scientific <laughs> understanding. So what dynamics shape history? And he said human beings, first of all, they produce food, clothing, shelter. They make things before they make them their own cultural lives. So they're political institutions, they're religious institutions. They're all founded upon the process of production. And what type of system of production you have shapes the way in which human beings live and think about the society, including about science, by the way, including about science. So science for early man, or the, the attempt to understand the world around us for early man, meant that we used the phrase, which we still use today, the sun rises and the sun sets. Of course, the sun doesn't rise and doesn't set. We move around the sun rather than the other way around. It appeared, it appeared for most of human history that it was the other way around, that the sun's moving around us. It appeared that way. So science meant that we looked beneath the surface to discover the internal dynamics driving something, making something move. So that was the, the, the riposte, if you like, to that, was that si science is not simply refutability but method of understanding method of understanding the dynamics of something well that's the sort of intent is to, is to get to some sort of understanding There's some sort of application possibly uh, and I've heard lots of different uh, top scientists sort of talk about the scientific method maybe in different ways they're very different approaches but, but this 
theory and refutability is is one of them. It's an it's an important it's, it, it's an important it's device really, of theory. It's, it's, I don't yes. deny that. So this is I mean, the reason I brought that, the reason the, I brought the, that the, out was because because the climate change theory is not even posed is posed as a theory. It's posed as a uh, coverall explanation, and so it's irrefutable. So therefore, it's not. It's not science, it's pseudoscience. That's well, the point. It is refutable. Because for example and by what for method? example Well if CO Not to those guys if, it wasn't. Well I think that's true. But for and C not to the others who for, for example, if you say that CO two emissions are causing a rise in temperature, then verifiability yeah. would be the collection of relevant data. Well, it doesn't exist and for them. Irrefutability would be or or refute refu refutation would be CO2 has risen significantly, but temperature doesn't. Well, there's right? plenty so of evidence where, for that. where that happens, then they have to either present, well, this particular swan was painted black instead of yes. originally was black, yes. which is what they do. So yes. I believe they do that consistently. Yes. That's the method they apply. So, for example, which is anti scientific. They say, it's fraud and in, the, in the news, they will say, do you think it's lies though? Temperature has risen. Temperature. Lying. No, I think just lying. I think there are multiple people who aren't lying. I think many people believe the whole story. And like particularly religion. particularly people who are working in the field believe the story. Yeah, One because paid. they get paid for it. Grants, two grants, because grants, academic grants. two because they get grants, resources, investment for it. Three because a lot of the evidence they turn up appears to confirm what they say. And when they find that rather than all swans being white, one is black, they try and find an explanation for it. And they say, well, maybe it was, well, maybe it was painted, or maybe it's pigmentation changed due to some peculiar genetic mutations. And that genetic mutation might have been caused by a rise in temperature, we're, we're or, by, or by an increase here, in CO2. Well, we aren't, because that's what, exactly what they do. Well, it is what they From do. From 1945, yes. see, the general argument is temperature has been rising since the Industrial Revolution, so since 1820. That's, that's the general yeah. argument. Yeah. But the specific argument comes against a problem, for example, that the data shows that the temperature fell between 1945 and 1975, a peak period for industrialization. And in fact, before 1945, industrialization was confined to certain corners of the world. Whereas you now have large scale industrialization, for example, in China, India, and also Africa, and also South America, which parallels what happened in Europe, North America, or Japan in the past. And those were the main regions for industrialization before the, first, before the Second World War. So really, we don't have any evidence about this question that conforms to the official theory that starts before 1975. And if it's starting in 1975, then there are some years after 1975 which were colder. And then they've got all the questions about where the date is taken from. But that's when they start saying, Oh, you're funded by the Heartland Institute, or you're funded by... And there are institutes which defend big oil, and which defend big gas, which fund these type of things as well as not be, be fools. And it doesn't mean that everything they say is correct either. No, but do you think they're telling lies because they're getting... Because my argument was, do you think they're knowingly telling lies deep down because they're there getting is a, There is a magnificent paper by paid. one of the world's, if not the world's leading epidemiologist, as it happens. And his name is John Ioannidis. And John Ioannidis is at Stanford University. He is or was? Is is at Stanford University. He hasn't been sacked. Tenured. He hasn't been sacked. Not yet. And, uh, <laughs> and his scientific like paper, pressure. which is the pressure. most cited scientific paper, I think of all time. And it's called, Science Why Most wrong. Scientific Publications are Findings Are Wrong. And that's, that's his paper. And he goes in, he shows that the overwhelming majority of scientific research is wrong. 
is false. Yeah. Overwhelming majority. And then he talks about biases. Everything. Science, medicine, epidemiology, aeronautics, engineering, most of it is wrong. Now, now, but, he has it, but he proves this, that it's wrong. Now, the point you made there about this, one is bias in funding. Two is self recognition. You don't want to accept that you're wrong. You've started on one pathway. You've done investigations. No one wants to be told, I've spent 40 years studying this and everything I've been looking at is wrong. No one, or better said, few people want to be told that. A genuine scientist, someone committed to the discovery of new knowledge, a genuine scientist will say, great. Yes, absolutely. I've spent all my years looking at it. And actually That's I was wrong. You know, when I did my PhD, it was a critique of the leading economist on socialism and he's called Janos Kornai and he's a, a Hungarian actually neoliberal but he wrote the number one book on socialism it's called uh, uh, the political economy of, of, of socialism uh, or political economy of poverty. socialism the socialist system political economy of poverty. so I did a study of his work and most of it I agreed with most of it I agree with but then I found what the flaws were in his argument and his argument about China was wrong. He said China had turned into a capitalist country and it's it controlled by a capitalist elite who run the country uh, as sort of gangsters, basically. And I, I made a detailed study and I showed that his basic arguments and data were incorrect. And I wrote to him and I sent him what I'd written. And he wrote back to me, this is the, a genuine scientific investigation. I wrote him and I said, because I didn't agree with him, he didn't agree with me, but we're both referring to the same data, the same information, the same places, the same ideas. He wrote back to me and said, you surprised me with your document. Your argument is one, A, B, C. Uh, my argument is A, B, C. And then on D, E, F, we disagree. And I'm not sure if you're right or not. And he said, I'm going to write to my friend. My friends I used to teach in China and I'm going to send them what you said and see what they say. And then he got them to send me, and he was 89 or so years ago. And he sent me, the, they sent me then this chunk, uh, uh, Shu Gang Ang. What did they come back with? They came back with a sneaky answer. Oh, that's a Chinese that's a sneaky for you. Answer. That's a Chinese for you. Well, that's you. You'd it, say it, that. He was a pro-Western <laughs> Chicago school trained economist. And he came back and said, although uh, Mr. Ku is right about X, Y, and Z, um, actually, uh, they're all billionaires, I can tell you, because I know personally. So then became his personal knowledge rather than his. Having said that, now, Xu uh, Chung Gun, his name is, uh, now he has written papers since that time uh, confirming what I said. So, but, but that is plagiarist as well. Well, well partly. No, that, that doesn't make it right. No, it doesn't make none so of those make it right. No, no, no. We could all be wrong. The, the point argument. is, we have attempted to achieve an understanding and exchanged ideas based on yes, this. But there aren't many fields where you can do this without upsetting people because they've got their position, their authority, their tenure, their belief, which is connected to their life and their meaning of their life. And so very few and people are winning success. And we saw the consequence of this during the whole COVID story. You know, in COVID, it was, this climate change is one story. And it's a continuing story going on and on and on. And the, 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 the fear I have is that the COVID story was used to reinforce the image that science is pseudo infallible. And people would wear masks, would obey what the government said. I was with someone from France earlier on. They couldn't, just one, one minute, one minute. You couldn't leave home without a green pass. You're supposed to go and get a jab in your arm. All of this in the name of science. But it turned out, but it turned out, it turned out, the, mark, the evidence afterwards, the evidence, because of course it's true. We didn't, a lot of this evidence did not exist before. But people knew or thought that this was likely. The masks did nothing. The data is shown now. But again, a YouTube doesn't allow you to say this, so I mustn't say this. Yeah. I don't believe that. No, the masks must have worked. No, but COVID existed and it did kill people. 
I mean, the common flu exists in many form, in many forms. Hang on, the common flu exists in many forms. In India, for example, and I know something about it. In India, what? In India, they all fall in dead, wouldn't they? All fall in dead in India. And you know, my friend, my friend, my friend. What do they do with dead bodies in India now? Oh no, they don't. Not COVID. Not COVID. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. Don't they? They, don't they burn, burn, burn their bodies, and they and if you're lucky, you get pushed into the Ganges, oh and your it's body floats on the, on the river. That's how people. It, no, no, that's in, how people in, in are cremated in India. Yeah, well, that's true. They are cremated. It's open they are fire. Cremated, but only a tiny percentage of people are burned, are, are, are burned by the Ganges. So, and I, you know, I've been to Baranasi, and I know that. But all over India, people would die. They've died all over in, the street. In the in, street, they were in India. In in uh, in well, in. Well, we know, we know, we know, we know, we know that. You see, you said to me, you said to me, Eric, what did you do? Was you alive? Were you used in order to kill people? What's that? No, not used to kill people. What's that? What you're saying is a lot of people literally used to kill people. Nobody cares, really. What do you mean? Yeah, we're saying that. Well, there you go. Go, go, go. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you I wouldn't take it, would you? I to that question. What the make I I'm just telling you, what the How's it work? Harun, Harun, Harun. I said, how does I not, but so what if I want? What if I want to one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. I mean, what a question to ask. What are you upset about? What are you upset about? It's a religion, do you know? What are you upset about? He's always upset. I'm sorry. He's always upset, this guy. What, 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 what? He said, he's asking the question. I'm a, 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 I'
this is deadly. It's interesting. And then you approach people as if you are going to die, oh, no. and therefore oh, we're going to no. help you to die more easily. Then it can be that they are killed exactly this way. So, for example, my colleague, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, my colleague, uh, my work colleague, he had a stroke in the summer of 2020. He came, he came down with flu-like symptoms in the winter, just before Christmas. And then he was taken to hospital. And when he got to hospital, they started treating him like he was gonna, like he was gonna die. I don't know whether they gave him midazolam, but they certainly put the fear of God in him. And when he was in hospital, his partner was invited to see him for one last time. I, she, she couldn't go and spend the time there, even though she'd had that same flu-like illness beforehand. When she went into the hospital, they said, now you can say goodbye to your lifelong partner, but only in a hazmat suit. And he ca she came in to see him in a hazmat suit. Disgusting. Now, if someone like is that, on the edge of life or death, and then the last thing you see of your partner is them in a hazmat suit, you are going to... Even if even if there was hardly anything wrong with you, you might die from the fear. And we know the phrase. We know the phrase from when you're a child. From when you're a child. You know the words that are used. Scared to death. Yes. Yes. Scared oh. to death. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And I believe that the immunity of millions of people and the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people were caused by being scared to death. Oh. By the media. Scared to death. Oh, yeah. For example, another example, another example, another example. You have people in care homes. And they were told, you cannot have any visitor to your care home. People who are 85, 90 years of age, in a care home. Life expectancy, life exp oh, you're the one who was all after having entertainment a minute ago. Now you're saying, let everyone die. Well, well why, don't you, why don't you go and take a leaping jump over there and join the religious meetings? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you do that? It was ten. It was fifteen minutes ago. You told me I was talking shit, and you've been filling your head with shit for fifteen minutes. So now you are a shit head. Well, just one sec. So if you got people in a care home, ninety years of age, eighty-five years of age, the only thing they live for is being visited by their grandchildren yeah, yeah. and their children and then you say you cannot visit at all at and you all, can see someone with putting your hand on a window oh, putting your hand well, on a well, window well, are you not saying well, that's going to well, kill people well, 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 of course it's going to well, kill people absolutely. and then they give them these well, drugs as well so i believe the they, invest the they don't investigate it of course they're investigating the opposite. They're investigating how the government slipped into this by chance. You see, they, the entire, the, the other thing, the other thing we know, the other thing we know as a fact now, right now, the other thing we know right now is that vast numbers of people, vast numbers of people, in excess of normal years are dying now and yes, have been since the COVID vaccines, vaccines were rolled out. Now I'm not saying there's a direct correlation between the COVID vaccines and their deaths, because I'm not allowed to do so on YouTube. But we know there is a correlation in time between large numbers of deaths in all age groups, excess deaths, in fact, last year, I believe, the thing, last year, by the way, last year, by the way, there was more excess deaths, more excess deaths in Britain last year after COVID and that's in a non-pandemic as a pandemic, a non -pandemic year. than in the year are you saying, of 2020. Are you, are you, more excess deaths and these deaths were in all ages, whereas COVID deaths 
were concentrated in the over 70 That is absolutely so. Can you the roof? Right? No, no, I know there are people who say. Professor Angus and we're seeing in the space of a few weeks. late night Charles is diagnosed with cancer. Conspiracy! I didn't say it. He said it. It's incredibly strange. My friend, my friend, my friend. Listen, my friend. That's what happens. End of life. Are you saying the medical? Let's get it right. I'm the medical profession is yes. dedicated to hospitalists. <laughs> you deliberately, <laughs> deliberately. The medical establishment has been put in place. This is nonsense. My friend, my friend, my friend. You have to understand. You have to understand. You have to understand. Every doctor and every nurse, shortly after they start work, they make mistakes. And when, one minute, when they make mistakes in a hospital, in a hospital, someone makes a mistake and a patient dies. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. What happens inside the hospital? The nurses and doctors get together and they say, look, we won't mention that because it can happen and we know. So one concealment. Everyone, a friend of mine is a doctor in a hospital. One of her first periods on the wards. Just, just one sec, I'll give you one story here. First periods on the wards. Someone came into hospital who had coughed their lungs out. They come out of their mouth. Coughed their lungs out? Coughed their lungs out. And they they carefully squeezed it back in. No, you can't do that. That's not possible. You can. You can. They carefully pushed it back into the chest. And when they pushed it back into the chest, then the doctor, the consultant said, to the doctor who was a friend of mine, no food for two days. So he got to two days and my friend was spending time as a doctor with his patient. She was new to working on the wards. She spent more time than was perhaps normally the case. And observed that this patient was still in a very poor condition and would probably not survive if they were allowed to eat at that moment. The consultant said, 48 hours, give them food. They had a little bit of food, that much, coughed their guts out and died. Coughed their lungs out and died. Now, she told me that personally. She couldn't go around the ward saying that, because it would make all the hospital, because it would make the doctor look like he's bad. Well, they may be doing their best. Why Soldiers do their best at war. The Israeli army is doing its best as well to save lives. But so look at the amount of people dying. There were, get me one as well. There were 100,000, as the gentleman just said, no sugar. 100,000 doctors and nurses refused to take the vaccine. By the way, at the moment, at the moment, there was a campaign to get people vaccinated with COVID-19 vaccine in the hospitals and they were some of the lowest take-up rates out of the whole different groups in society, some of the lowest take-up rates in the country. You were going to say earlier, sorry. All right, stopped you. I'm sorry, it was just one statistic that 2019 in the US, the third largest cause of death behind Heart attack and stroke. Medicine. I said that. Was, yeah, I was saying. I was at that. I had genesis. Was right. a le- word that I learned well, in 2020. The other thing. Like, is, the other thing God, is. God, I had no idea. In the United States, they all went on about the COVID deaths, but the deaths from fentanyl, mm, in terms yeah. of actual li- lives, yeah. years, lo- years yeah, lost. Yeah. Didn't far you, higher yeah. than the deaths from the than the deaths right, from um, right, from from a co- from a crib- attributed to COVID. Right. Because most of the deaths attributed to COVID in the states were over seventy. In Britain and, and Germany, it was over over eighty. And uh, in the United States, most of the people who die of right. from was, or it with it was, it was are like thirty to forty years of age, and so they lose thirty to forty years of lifespan. So if you add them up. The actual life is lives, lives lost, quality life years lost to fentanyl during that period is far higher than COVID. And if you take since that period, it's going on. You look at these, you know, dump, uh, uh, tent cities in the United States at the moment, where all the all the people on fentanyl, are, you know, like yeah. you know, deadly ghosts of people. Which is again, it's the big drug companies behind that. So what do you think the idea that they're that they're immune to behaving 
in barbaric fashion. And of course, you know, some people, I don't know who they are, but some people say that the Pfizer juice was also very bad for human health. Because I didn't take it, so I don't know about that. And, and I can't I make any comment. You took one shot, didn't you? Why? I didn't take any shots, no. Oh, why? I have taken <laughs> vaccines in my life. It doesn't seem like it. I've taken vaccines. Slam, well, you should have your booster, mate. <laughs> it might do you some good. Go on. Why do you think that RFK is so kind of beholden to the Israeli lobby? Do you think it has like... Actually, I got quite out on that. Because I, I stood up here do you think it has at the beginning. When he first stood, I stood up here and I said, support uh, Kennedy. But um, you made, you made uh, this man, Chad, he's terrible on Israel. Climate change. Well, and, and climate change. But Israel, you said. No, other, no, okay, other people, said Israel. other people said Israel. Other people said Israel to me. And I said, well, Israel, I remember having a discussion about it. I said, well, Israel is a tiny country. It's not that significant. And here we are. You know, here we are. A few months later, uh, the Israeli state bombing and killing on a daily basis with the, the excuse the of October the 7th. What a barbaric regime. If, you, if you're talking, you can't criticize Big Pharma's influence on corrupting the political, you know, like um, the political process if you're not talking about the Israeli lobby. Well, because they're, if the you're, Israeli because lobby it, is a powerful lobby. So you know, in Britain, they were responsible for removing Jeremy Corbyn. Right, absolutely. They did it. Right. Absolutely. They, Norman, they, Norman they took broke control of the right. Labour Party right. and they made the Labour Party their instrument such that Keir Starmer, right. that, that, that the creature, right the creature from out of the ground, right. the right of the Keir Starmer party. turned yeah, out and said, Yeah, and they're friends of Israel. Uh, I yes. cannot condemn right. Israel they use, they if they cut off food and water. If they Israel. cut off food and water, you cannot condemn Israel. How can you condemn Israel? Because they're the universal sanctified lords of protection of the people. Right. This is the nonsense and lunacy. And the Israeli lobby has a powerful influence around the world. And Anybody denies that has to be blind. Right. I mean, yeah. their, their, their assassination. Blind, deaf, or dumb. Are, you know, Sorry? Blind, blind deaf, deaf, or dumb. That's right. I mean, the Israeli lobby is enormously powerful. Not only, also in the Conservative Party, and in the on, Democrats, on all, all and sides. in the Republican yeah. Party. Labour friends of and Israel, in, Sorry friends of Israel, correct. APAC. Well, well there's so, that saying, isn't there? The what, they, what did um, they ask David McGee? What first attracted you to the multi millionaire Paul Daniels? Yeah. <laughs> well, what first contracted what first attracted the Labour Party and the Conservative Party to the Friends of Israel? What first attracted them to the Israel? Israel? It's the same question that they put to Debbie McGee. Yeah. <laughs> you can put that question to the Conservative and Labour Friends of Israel. No, I actually support Israel's right to exist, unlike yeah. some people here. Yeah, I'm not yeah, Heiko. I'm not yeah, Heiko because he doesn't I was asked about no, this. I was asked about this some weeks ago. I'll leave her back one minute. I was asked about this some weeks ago. And someone raised the question, he said, how can, because I said, I said, Israel, per se, does not have a right to exist. I said, it's right to exist. It's right to exist. Could be one or one back if the people rose up against this government and overthrew it. But if the regime is just murdering and killing people on a daily basis by aerial bombardment of the children and women of Gaza, well then they have no, that has no, that such a state has no right to exist. That's what I meant by that. And I stand by that. Such as, nor does Britain have a right to exist if it does stuff like that. Nor does Germany or the United States have a right to exist if they carry out barbarism right. against people. Utter impunity. No what do you think no, about but, Candace sorry. Owens being, um, have you heard about her being released from How the Danish people know these people's, people's names? Danish I don't even know who these people are. No, no, okay. Who's Candace Owens? So she's a, 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 a black African-American sort of female conservative commentator yeah. who was associated with like Trump's kind of, you know, when he came to... to okay, court. what did she say? But she, she, after October 7th, you know, said that Palestinian children have a right to live. That's all she said. You know, she, oh, ben, oh, Shapiro, ben, ben Shapiro runs the Daily yeah. Wire, or he's the main... And so, of course, they're us, they're, they're completely like um, Zionists. Yeah, it's Zionist. turned into this he's world. A where he's we, a Mossad. We've got a few of these so. yeah. online no, heroes, the, isn't it? You've got uh, that's exactly Pier, Piers, Piers Morgan. Yeah, you've got uh, Ben Shapiro. You've got uh, you know these various these people, these characters just, they never, pick out. Uh, <laughs> you Joe Rogan. <laughs> Now, you want to be one too, don't you? They never let me pass. They never, they never let me pass ten thousand views. Yeah, never. <laughs> At the ma normally we get a thousand views, and you can see because I got the, the uh, I got the the, the, the reference as how it goes. The numbers go up like this, and then it stops. 
<laughs> like it gets to a point it goes zero in sleep ever again so nobody sees it you get past two days and it's completely blocked from anybody seeing it so of course you don't get any any views i mean this algorithm say those people do not allow their views to get out so that's the way it works if you go around speaker's corner watching watching every fight that happens in speaker's corner you get a million views you know that's how it works but i'm not bothered about that quality over quantity by the way i did i did i didn't tell people yet but uh, a small announcement. I've only told Addy here. I did, after contemplating the issues in Britain today, I did decide to join uh, Galloway's Workers' Party. So I've joined his party. Uh, I might be willing, if they want me to stand somewhere, as you mentioned earlier, I might be willing. I might be willing to stand in Westminster to scupper the vote. Well, I, or somewhere like that. I am helping to choose the Conservative candidate for Westminster well, tonight. We don't need to know that, do we? Really? Yes, you do. I'm not trying to help you. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to help a position where there might be a hung parliament, and where the Workers' Party would be the intermediate group. That would be, in my opinion, the best scenario. Because then the Labour Party will split, people from the Labour Party will join the Workers' Party, and then you could have a, an alternative force to to uh, uh, to this monstrosity we've got today. So, on that. Okay. i just make that a point about back to RFK, because I, no, I know I called him out by, from the beginning, but... Uh, you did, indeed. I, so, uh, I don't want to cry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, but, it's, cause, but see, I think that there's there's no there's no there are no heroes. It's like Trump. Trump was a kind of uh, monkey wrench in the system. He was definitely outside. RFK was similar. Actually, RFK has gone silent. Or no, he's not gone silent. He said that he's not going to address the climate issue. In his campaign, I think he's changed which his view is, on that. Which is, well, maybe, maybe he has. I, he bloody should do because he was calling. He was, let me let me say, he was calling for people to be arrested and put in prison if, right. if they come on. So, like that, that, so, right. but he said over this this period he will he will he will not talk about it. I mean, so he may well have changed his is, views. But let one me, thing is, people can change their mind. They can Whitney change their Webb mind. She was utterly I do quite think. Close to I do think. Yeah. He was quite yeah. good. You know, so people have. Yeah. He was quite good on the COVID question. Well. But having said that, I'm currently writing a piece, specifically criticising Kennedy, about China because he brought out a book now yeah. called the Wuhan Cover Up, which is entirely based on the idea that. It was a lab leak from China, oh, that, that's and that the, the evidence for this so called lab leak wow. is that there were uh, photographs, satellite photographs of car park hospitals in China, and these car park, the, sorry, the hospital car parks in China, and the hospital car parks in China were more busy than usual in October 2019, and that is supposed to be a proxy for COVID 19. I mean, PCR tests are bad enough. But to say that the number of cars in a car park determines whether you've got COVID or not, I think you're stretching the imagination but that's quite a long way. But that's that's, right. that's well, it's, the it's, it's well, you've got to remember. He's going to make it interesting. He's going to raise the, the issues. You've got to remember as that the Trump, American state, both own. Democrat and Republican, and Kennedy, Kennedy and, uh, are ferociously anti-China. They they want. The, the only difference between the Trump brigade and the and the others is about tactics about how you go about turning the issue to China. The only reason the Republicans want out of I can't eat while I'm talking. Can I? Give it to me. No, we can. give it to me. I can do many things. <laughs> that no. You don't know. Ask them around. So so they want to they want to stop the war in in Ukraine. In order to move to Russia, you know that guy John Mearsheimer, who they're putting yeah. on. He's very good yeah, as a really like important. realist analysis of the world. But he's advocating that he's saying stop the war against Russia in order to fight China, because China is our real enemy. Stop Look at the data. Stop, China is the enemy. You know. So, and in my opinion, China's not an enemy. China's system, for all its flaws, 
is a system designed to serve the needs of the enemy as well for all its flaws. Did you hear that? Like that the 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 that's the truth. Here we get the Pavlovian response. When you mention China, you get the Uyghurs. Many, not yourself, but many people at Speaker's Corner, I've heard them. Not yourself. Heard them. They're, and they're, they're anti anti Muslim, and then and then you mention China. They say, "What about the Uyghurs?" Right, <laughs> so right, all of a sudden, they're in favour of the Muslims in China. But of course, the story about the Uyghurs is a mythology. It's not a mythology. It's a mythology. Again, you've got satellite images of a building. This building's been built. Must be a concentration camp. And then they show you stories produced by the World Uyghur Congress, based in Germany, funded by the Americans, which says that there are millions of Uyghurs in prison in um, in, in Xinjiang, in Western China. It was the same story with Hong Kong, by the way. Don't forget, it was the same story with Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, when British financed and American financed kids took to the streets, smashing the place up, set in the place on fire. They were cheered in the West, cheered in the West as freedom fighters. But you see, when the people take to the streets in London oh, yeah. and protest against tyranny in London under the coronavirus regulations, we're called plague and conspiracy theorists. So you've always got to, no matter what, I'm not saying don't look at the, what happened in Uyghur or in Hong Kong, whatever, but always when you hear these stories, about the monstrosities taking place against the Ukrainians Absolutely. by the Russians, well, well, against the Hong Kongers by the Chinese, me, against the like Uyghurs that. by the Chinese. Remember, the first question you ask is, how are things really here? We are the people arming Israel to bomb the Gazan people. We are the people, they admitted it in the telephone conversation the German army recorded from Singapore, that the British had troops on the ground in Ukraine, on the ground in Ukraine, supporting the bombing of the people in Ru of the of the Russians, supporting the bombing of the Russians and the people in the Donbass. The Russians, the Russians did not attack Ukraine. This is a long-standing conflict. A long-standing conflict. It did not start. It did not start in 2022. It started in 2014, and in 2014, a coup d'état was carried out in Ukraine, orchestrated by the Americans and the Europeans. Now, then there was the split with the Donbass in eastern in eastern Ukraine. Then the Ukrainians launched a war against the people in the Donbass, which continued until 2022, a week before the Russians went into the Donbass area and moved in from the north. There were thousands of missiles fired against the people in the Donbass. No one went on about that. Right? So it's always about how you contextualize the background to what's happening. And even, even 2014 would not be adequate. Because don't forget in 2006, I believe it was, they, they carried out what was called the Orange Revolution. Was it 2004? Orange Revolution. You know, that Yulia Timishwara Timish or whatever her name was. With a Timoshenko. Uh, carried out a coup d'etat and they were always it was a, a standard pattern these so-called uh, color revolutions you know it was uh, set up by the cia that you orchestrate a group everyone turns out in a particular color it gives an identity to it then the western media catch up on it claim these are the democrats and these are the freedom fighters no matter what they do I mean, what about that guy it's a, template. a couple of That's weeks ago template. navalny yeah, many, many right? times. Yes. On the day, on the day that Julian Assange was in his court, was had his court hearing in London, his last extradition court hearing, a man who's been in Belmarsh prison for more than five years, most of that time in solitary confinement, tortured by the British, with no charge against him, no charge against him, the number one ex exposing journalist in the world, in prison, in Britain, in London. And then that same day, Navalny died. And when Navalny died, all over the news. Navalny, hero of peace and freedom. They didn't mention that when he talked about the people of the Caucasus, the Muslim people in the Caucasus, he refers to them as cockroaches. 
cockroaches to be annihilated. So this is, this is the friend. This is the friend of the way. He should be arrested. Sorry. So the reason why Navalny got arrested was because he got filmed talking to an MI6 operative asking for 20 mil to start a fucking campaign against the Russian government to overthrow them. Well, we won't likely to allow that here. Like. Well, exactly, exactly. Right. So, so this uh, this general lie machine. And that's what it is. It's a lie machine. You know, people go. A couple of days ago, they said to us. I mean, this cake story, I wasn't going on about the cake story. I didn't say anything about it. But then um, some people came, jumped in, and then they said, conspiracy theories, conspiracy theories. How can you have conspiracy theories? And then they showed this photograph or video of, of, of some person walking in a farm shop in Windsor who clearly wasn't Kate Middleton. We're not even sure it was, uh, it was uh, uh, William. And then they said, anyone who says that's not true is conspiracy theory. That's what they said. So no wonder people say, yeah, in the Sun no, 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 in the Sun News paper, in the Sun News paper, the Sun News paper, that's just, you know, you know what, the Sun News is just a flag-waving rag. My friend, my friend, they're all flag-waving. Yeah, the worst, the worst are those who are supposed to be the best. The worst, the most outrageous newspaper nowadays in Britain is the Guardian newspaper. It's the worst of all the newspapers. Second is the Independent. Second is the Independent. So why is your country along with other European countries, basically your leadership is destroying the economies of societies and uh, basically your futures for American dictats out of Washington. Because they're crocodiles? Jimmy, I mean, why are they doing it? The Germans, for example, you know, they're following the line and sending these, these weapons to Germany and they're doing it uh, from the best. Macron will send the army! Their Nord Stream pipelines. I mean, they're basically ruining the economies of this entire continent and your leadership is all behind it. Yes, yes. They I mean, hope. The yeah. the there are different there. interest groups at stake. The Germans, historically, have always had this vision. If Russia and Prussia get together, you know, it can be the biggest power on earth. You know. So if the European Union breaks apart, there's that consciousness in the section of the German aristocracy and elite. Then there's Macron. He wants control of Europe. He therefore postures. We will go to war with Russia. Don't forget, Napoleon nearly succeeded. And then you've got uh, the Americans who would like the Europeans to fight against fight each other, and then the Americans would fight against China and defeat China. China is the number one enemy of the United States of America. And so when Donald Trump says we will withdraw or we will stop the war in Russia, what he means is we'll start the war with China. So That's what he means. So we'll start the basis of a war with China. Uh, are we building up, do you think that Europe and America are building up the border? The contradictions in the world, don't forget, we've had a global economic crisis since 2008. And because that global economic crisis has been festering on and on and on, the contradictions between the powers have increased to a level of intensity not seen since the Weimar Republic, since the interwar years. And therefore, the contradictions Predictions that lead to war are all there. That doesn't mean war will actually happen. Generalised war. But the contradictions that lead to war are all there. And the same interest groups, the same interest groups are at stake. The ruling elites control the world's economic resources on all sides. On all sides, are battling for power over control over the world. I see these meetings as dissolved into three meetings, which means I will call all. Thank you very much. And all, and all these young men. I'm stopping. All these young men are going to be cannon fodder. You're going to be cannon fodder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cannon fodder. Cannon fodder. You. you. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. See you later. Nice. Good to see you. Just one last question. Ah, bye. So, I mean, you may have mentioned that a lot of the media is like a, a rag in the wind, essentially. Everyone's different. What's the... If I take, for instance, that I'm impartial, and I know which one to listen to, which is a question of the team. How do I know which information is true, which isn't? It's the same way that you could have, like, so many of these methods in the world. You've got, to, you've got to look at the different sources. So, you know, think about the whole Russian thing was, when the war in Ukraine starts, they said you can't watch Russian TV anymore. You cut it off. So that's exactly what you need to do. 
and put it in the right piece of detail and then, and then analyse the different sides and understand where they're coming from and then understand where ideas and power come from, where it stems from. So that's, a, that's a question about the nature of the social economic system. Once you understand the nature of the social economic system, it gives you an ability to get some insight into the game. It's not the only answer because you know, many people, many people who agree with me on many issues, they had a mad position on COVID, or even a mad position on Ukraine, a mad, what I think would be a mad position on China. So, you know, people have different viewpoints and they need to discuss, debate, go through it, and have some method to understand the world. So you would recommend that? I mean, I'm a Marxist, so yeah, I use yeah. a Marxist method, but having said that, I know many people who are Marxists who completely just don't think I'm a lunatic, you know, so, well, I mean, yeah, fair play to me. You need to, uh, you need to, uh, although we don't like the idea of conflict, you do need to, uh, what's the best way to put it, you need to debate with other people. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And this is the whole game of recent times, and it's been Jewel, a liberal, Jewel, not war, we've been war. cutting that out. So, Say, you can't say this, you can't say that. Yeah. You can't say anti-Semitic, you can't say this, you can't say that. There is a pushback against it, but it tends to come from what is called the right. Uh, and actually it should be the cause of the left. Historically it was always the cause of the left, free speech uh, and democratic opinions. But unfortunately, you know, that has begun to disintegrate. So the, the, the guy who argued at the very beginning of the meeting, he was trying to argue about class, and I said to him, well, you know, that's actually my viewpoint, but he's, 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 he, he was agreeing with me, actually, in many things, but he didn't realise it, he couldn't, yeah. couldn't tolerate it. Well, Marxism is like the foundation is a class yeah. Yeah. So, of course, yeah. Yeah. anyone who wasn't Chinese... Uh, Personally, for me, I'm more of a Jewish, 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 so I believe that I mean, there is a debate. It's almost impossible to a certainty of knowledge when it comes to social science. So it's approximate, you can approximate, you can learn. Oh, yeah, actually, the way that she was yeah. we may not know that's the truth, but I can that's the way that it's interesting. Exactly. Yeah, that is insight. If you want to understand, if I want to understand the Muslim world, it's true. I've never read the two, and I don't really spend much time around, but I spend a little bit. So I know a little bit from here. But if I really wanted to understand the, the, the parts of the Muslim world, I'd have to at least go and listen to them. Follow what they say, and then find a, a pathway to, to, to engage with them. And if you can't do that, you're basically stuck. It's you know, like right? what they say, isn't it? Where <laughs> Marx is uh, secretly a very good capitalist because he understood what capitalism was. Oh, found, found like the challenges that come. Engels was, but he wasn't. Yeah. But yes, in theory, I mean, I know a guy who's, a, who's, who's a one of the leading Marxists in the world you know, you know, who spent his life as a capitalist. So it's good to have an understanding about that. Yeah, yeah. I've run businesses, um, and anyway, I've worked. It's not that much of a work. <laughs> but, uh, so I, I, I hope I have an understanding from both points of view. I don't hate capitalism. I don't love the working class. I don't think necessarily we should easily hate the people who we oppose. Like you said, you have to debate on things. As soon as you bring hatred into that, I think you, you start muddying the walls. I mean, sometimes, uh, sometimes, you know, when there's a movement going on, like we were, I did a video last week, we were doing the lockdown stuff, and these came out as actors. You can't not, you, know, you go up to them and talk to them, but. You know, when they hit someone for no reason and do violence, do you think? Yeah, no, it's nothing to do with violence. Yeah, I do think if you do reason to violence, it's basically. There was in the video that I, that I did uh, put out a couple of days ago. That guy there with a the trolley. It was my father Christmas. Yeah. The police were arresting him. You know, one of the, he was the second person they arrested. Martin the park for being in the park. For being here, he was like literally here. They marched from other park and he was shouting out, "You are enemies of the people. These are enemies of the people." And about thirty coppers marched him out and arrested him for being in the park. That was it. And there were hundreds of others in the park. They just picked on him. You know. Yeah. I won't take up too much of your time anymore. Right? You're welcome. Man. Okay. Oh, how, do you, what, what do you think about how it started? The what? How it started? Where do you think it started? I don't think there was an origin. I think I think it's been around. I mean, I I I, 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 I believe I believe. <laughs> well, that's exactly what it is. A, a, a type of mutation. I, I mean, I, I provide a lot of evidence to show SARS one never disappeared. Well, do you, do you, do you, right? But the issue is what came before SARS one, and I think there were various iterations of these things. They all just keep mutating over time. I put out a video of that with you on it. I don't know if you're one of those people that believes it actually put out the video. You're the second person to make it. This is the Omicron period. These are enemies of the people taking over. It's a very nice video. It looks really strong. It's on subject attitude. I'll send the link to 
I think it is. But you know, you know, there was a Wuhan yeah, yeah, military world game. Yeah, I know that. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think that, 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 that the military would have. Uh, I don't think. And military would have. I don't think. Done something. I think it's a natural thing. So they've been planning a higher level. Basically, it's a flu and cold in one form or another. All of flus and colds are caused by something. And in each year, they change. But you don't think it was a plan? I mean, they were the, the, the pandemic reaction was a plan. There were people who had planned what to do in the event of a pandemic, and they tried it with, with swine flu. There was a video I posted a couple of days ago um, from 2000. Uh, and it's called uh, the business of swine flu. She was on that. Yeah, in Mexico, you get everyone wearing masks, they had temperature controls in some countries, they had closed the schools, they, you know, all these things that there were attempts to do general pandemic control. And then they just kept working on that, they kept expanding to the extent where they discussed, they had debates about these things from the autumn of 2019 and also previously, which were dry run modelling for pandemic measures. And then they just went bananas with it. I mean, did you ever see that uh, um, she spoke about how there was going to be a uh, pandemic? Conspiracy theory, which is like the worst thing on depopulation. I didn't see stuff about that. Right? Yeah, that, was, that was broadcast in 2009 where I'm said that he had some. Right. There are plenty of people who yeah. believe in depopulation. But I don't think that would drive most of them. Primarily because, in my view, wealth comes from living people. So, well, new wealth, if you want to make a new bicycle, a human being makes it. A human being makes that object. But what if a robot does it? You don't need if a robot does it. If a robot does it. That's true. Then, then, you, then you don't have any real needs. You saying they are having an effect on the point. I'm not at that point at the moment. If you got to the point where the robots were making robots, making everything that we do, that would be a different situation. But we're not at that point. But you can still have a plan. What I'm is they can still have a plan to carry out the population to take out. Last there are people, no, I'm saying, there are people who think that, but I don't think that, well, you know, I don't think that's commanding what happened. Well, you know, you know, I believe I was infected by SARS or COVID or whatever it was, COVID nineteen, whatever you call it that, and because I went to a testing station and they put a spatula up my nose, and then a week later I got the COVID. I mean, well, I mean, maybe it's coincidence, but it's quite, it's quite difficult to infect someone. That's it. There, there was a thing called the Human Challenge Trial, and the Human Challenge Trial was fairly happy about it. Yeah. They had 36 healthy volunteers in England. They had them in a medical enclosed environment in individual rooms. And then they laid them down and dripped SARS CoV 2 substance into their nose. And they closed the nose for 10 minutes or half an hour. Only half of them came down with something. Half of them did, but half of them didn't. And half of them, they couldn't even detect the other half. They couldn't even detect the presence of SARS CoV 2. Even though they dropped them into their nose, it didn't do anything to them. It didn't even show infection. You know. So it's about susceptibility. You know, there's the thing terrain theory versus, versus viral theory or germ theory. And that's a big sharp debate. Lots of people here say, oh, there's only terrain. Like, like you, you are weak because you, you eat the wrong food, you don't write. You don't write. And that's part of it. I think that's all true. I think that's all true. But I also think that you can be infected by something because you're weak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, that's what I think. But I mean, yeah, I think you like. If some people get, you know, get pollen in their nose and start sneezing. So I think that is possible. But there are people who turn around and say, no, that isn't possible. You only, you know, you, it's only terrain. It's only you being too weak. Well, I, I, I really like that, 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 that documentary. Really, yeah, yeah. Because it really, you know, it was very interesting because, you know, the fact that he was about his population yeah. and he had some anonymous person who's come out of yeah. And I mean, the story did sound a bit fishy because she's saying she got the story from she was a, a doctor and she got the story from some elite figure. Now, why would an elite figure go and confer some secrecy to her? A lot of the stories are like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. We just but they're all the most exciting it. stories. Yeah, yeah. But uh, well, but the, I mean, the the evidence on on the preparation, on the planning and preparation, is that thing called Event Two Hundred One, which is in November two thousand nineteen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's a whole series of what they're planning to do. We in the event of disease X or whatever. Well, you've heard of that Hariri, what he's been saying. Hariri, I think it's fascinating. 
Yeah. You're saying that um, we need to get rid of non-productive human beings oh, right. due to die. Yeah. 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 Well, he's part of the World yeah. Economic Forum well, okay. with, with, with Klaus Schwab. Right. So they've got yeah. the motive. Although that's an important faction within the ruling class, I don't think it's decisive. The World Economic Forum will yeah. everybody. Yeah. Suddenly they're all fighting each other. Don't forget, Putin was part of the World Economic Forum. They're all fighting war, isn't yeah. yeah. so, you know, yeah. yeah. But anyway, I'm glad to hear that you're, you're joining the Workers' Party. Yeah. 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 I, I hope that you do become like a... Well, 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 you know, uh, well, I'm in Shepherd's Post. Uh, you're, you're my way. You're my, no, I'm, I'm, I'm over that way. Oh, so, uh, is it? Very weird. Yeah, because no, I'm I, great. Like, Westminster might be a place to stand. I don't know. It's great to stand up against Keir Starmer. Just, just, just and, to stand up. Yeah, give, yeah. Even if it's just on the street, stand up and give, give well, help. Well, I'll be I'll be playing that trumpet right. about the workers' party. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All of us. Got Come on, he's got some... We're all sick of this Labour Party. He's got... Fake. Testicular fortitude, to, man. He's got, he's got. got to, but you've got, right? to, you've got to. Come on, man. Like, on like Jeremy Corbyn. He's the, the Tory, to, king of the Tories. We've got to get rid of Susan. Sorry, Sadiq Khan. Ah, you ah, ah, nearly said it. He nearly said it. He's going to say. Well, Susan you really Norway. meant is that. Susan. 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 You're going for her job. I would rather we had a better candidate. They started the new election. Well, it was a conservative. It was. Yeah, but it was conservative. Who started it? Look, Ben Carson. Who's your poison? Well, the woman is there.